So I need to remind you on where we stopped in the last class. In the last class, we kind of figure out how to find the volume uh, for something we call it one Boeing cross section. Huh? And I will box the name. I want you to understand what does it mean one Boeing cross section. When I say one point cross section, it means for every section we have surveyed only one point of existing ground, which is here under the center line. And to continue and finish the calculation, there was an assumption. The assumption is the ground stays constant on the cross section. Please look up my magenta line and this has a meaning. This magenta line, it has a meaning. It means the elevation of the existing ground on the cross section does not change. It stays constant. And once it stays constant, then uh, this geometry here, it is simply a trapezoidal shape. Please watch this. So I'm referring to the cross section area between the blue, which is your finished ground, and your magenta, which is existing ground. What do you think about this shape? Any help? This is a trapezoidal shape. And because it's a trapezoidal shape, how can we find the area of the cross section? That is not very difficult. <clears throat> if you know the width of the road as W, like this given here, this is my W uh, given to you. You also know uh, the uh, side slope as uh, Z units to one vertical unit. And then finally, you know the depth of fill at this uh, section here, uh, which we call it C. If you know all those parameters, the cross section area is very simple. It's over here. So the area would be you take your the, the road width, you multiply by the C and then plus the side slope Z. Multiply by C squared, please pay attention to uh, the math. So between the W and the C, it is multiplication. So the W is multiplied by the C, and then we add to that the Z multiplied by C squared. I get very sad when some of my students, they fill in the exam to find the cross-section area because simply they don't do the math right. Okay, now once we know the cross-section area, you guys know what to do. Huh? If we're able to find all the cross-section areas, uh, then we use a method like Simpson or trapezoidal to find the volume uh, for our project. So this is what we mean by one Boeing cross section. Now my point, my question for you is, what if my ground it is not constant? What if my ground is not constant? When I say the ground is not constant, so it means my ground looks like so. So my red line is my ground. Looks like so, and I probably I'll give a different line type so you guys can see. So here is my existing ground, and uh, as as I said, if you just ignore the change and only survey one point, the cross section, and you assume it's constant, there is uh, simply your calculation is not correct because your cross section area is not trapezoidal anymore. So where is my cross section area in this case? Please watch this. I will mark for you on the cross section. Where is the cross section area? So again, it's always between the finished ground and the existing ground. And here we go. Here is my cross section area. Now my question for you is, can I use this equation W multiplied by C plus Z squared to find this area in yellow? Please say yes or no. No. No, you cannot. So what is our my, my options? Here we go. So I'm going to move you to today's class. So in today's class, we're going to talk about three Boeing cross section. Huh? Look at the name, please. Three Boeing cross section, which means for every cross section, I had to survey three point to represent the existing ground. One of them is under the center line and the other one where the side slope meets the ground on the left. And the last one is where the side slope meets the existing ground on the right. Please count one, two, three. 
That's why we call this one existing ground. Sorry, three point cross section. Is it optional? It is not optional. Point is when your ground changes, then we have to survey more points. In the previous class or the previous few classes, my ground was constant. Then I needed only one point. Sometimes even your ground doesn't. It, it is a changing. For example, like our first example here in our class, even your ground is changing, but sometimes one point could be enough. How? Watch this. So this an example tells you, uh, for example, sewer. How wide is my sewer? How wide? Is it 20 meter, 30 meter uh, trench? No, it is only 1.25, 1.5. 1.75 meter, so it's very narrow. And think about it this way. What if my ground is a changing? What if my ground is a changing uh, in the cross section? However, I just only survey one point. What do you think? Am I still getting a good volume if I just survey only one point? Any any thoughts? No. So you think if I have a very narrow project like a sewer, I still need to survey so many points per cross section or one point is enough? One point should be enough for something that narrow. Exactly. So that's my point, guys. So some so here is the here is the rule. The rule is in general, you should uh, follow the ground. If the ground is constant, so one point per cross section is enough. If your ground is complicated and it needs more point, yes, do it. But sometimes when the project is very narrow, uh, so even the ground is a changing, then still one point is enough because this within the 1.75 meter, there is no significant change. Look at my cross section. There is very little I missed because I survey only one point. This is unlike roads. When you look at roads, for example, the roads, they have two lanes, three lanes, four lanes, they have median. So the width is significant, and that's why it's not an optional. If your ground is changing, then you must survey more points. I want you to understand that neglecting or, uh, or, or ignoring uh, the change of the ground will result in bad volume calculation. Watch this, please. So I'm telling you, what if the situation is like that, and I survey only one point at the center line? So in my calculation, what I will do is I'll just do that. I will just assume that my ground is constant across and I will simply uh, based on this red line, I will go ahead and find this cross section area. OK, so I will go ahead and do that using W uh, W plus C plus EC square. OK, so this will be my area. Is that right? It is completely wrong cross section area because the reality is I'm not going to really uh, fill this uh, yellow uh, vo uh, white, uh, area while the reality is because the ground is changing. This will be my new area, so I'm going to do it here. So my area, which I should estimate to find the good volume is simply uh, this uh, one here. So the green is the good one, the right one, and the yellow is the bad one. Now let's move on to the implementation. So now you're saying, OK, so we have surveyed three points. So I know that uh, what was the elevation under the center line and what is the elevation on the left and what is the elevation on the right? Now my question for you guys should. Can I still use W multiplied by C plus Z multiplied by C square or this equation doesn't work anymore? Are you guys following? I'm asking you with 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 given that now I'm wor working on a three boring cross section. I'm asking you, can I still use this equation here? Uh, w plus C uh, W uh, multiplied by C plus EC square. What do you think? Uh, no, 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 you can. Thank you so much. That's what I wanted to hear. So uh, so what is the other? What can I do then? Here we go. I'm going to show you some math work that will allow you to find this area in green. Uh, and please do not use W 
multiply by C plus G square because this applies only if you have a trapezoidal shape. Now, I know some of you will get uh, scared now, will get terrified. Oh, Tahir, this shape here is so complicated. Like it's not something that we have an equation right away. We can find this area. It is not super difficult. Watch me, please. I will make things easy for you. So we, we know in engineering when things become very complicated, probably what I will do is I will split this area into smaller simple areas. One of them is here. So I'm going to show you right now. Here is my first uh, shape. What do we call this shape? Any help? Triangle. Triangle. triangle, that's correct. And do you guys remember how can we find the area of the triangle? If I know the width of the road, like this is the width of my road. Here is the W. This number is given to you. Uh, I, I'm going to here mark some numbers and I know some of you will ask me how do we find them? Just please be patient. I'll show you later on how to find them. But I'm asking you if we know the W, the road width, and we know this number which is called HL. Are we able to find the area of this triangle? Yes, we can. Yes, here we go. I'm gonna write the equation. Please say yes if you agree. So A1, I'll call it A1 equal to W, or sorry, half one over two, multiplied by W, multiplied by HL. Would you agree? Uh, I'm sorry, half uh, W over 2 multiply like half W over 2 multiply by HL. Would you agree? Remember the area of the triangle is half of the base times the height. And what defines the height is you go to the third the vertex here and then you drop a perpendicular to the base. So the base is simply from here to there, which is W over 2. And the height is HL. Would you agree that this will give us A1? Yes. OK, so we'll do very quickly. We'll do the other side very quickly because you guys got the idea. I'll just give it different color. So how can we find the area of the green triangle? I think if you follow the first one, it should be easier for you. So I'm going to say A2 equals half 1 over 2 multiplied by the base, which is W over 2 multiplied by the height, which is HR, if you agree. OK. We're not done yet because there are still two missing triangles. I'm going to show you where's the third one. So the third one is here from this point to this point to this point and then close. We gave it different color. Let's say cyan and I'm asking you, can we find the area of the cyan triangle? Let's do it. Huh? So I'm going to write it here. A3 equals half the base. And in this case, the base will be your C. And then the height will be something called DL. Again, what is DL? Just please be patient. So on this sketch here, this is the DL and this is the C. And I will show you in a uh, in few minutes. I'll show you how to find the DL and the C. OK, now finally, let's do the last one. So the last one is triangle triangle from here to there to this point to this point. And then we can give it a color. Let's say uh, this color here and then the area of the last one. So A4 will be half base, which is C multiplied by the height, which is D R. OK, so now you can see you can see I have found now four areas of four different triangles and my total area is nothing more than adding them together, adding them together. So you know what? What I will do is I just I'll just sort out the terms. I'll just rearrange my terms like so, because look at this between A1 and A2. Do you see any common factor? Between A1 and A2, do you have any common factor? A half and W over 2. So W over 4, huh? W over 4 is a common factor. And you can see here is W over 4 as a common factor. And from the first area, we have HL left and HR. So here is HL and here is HR. How about A3 plus A4? Uh, there is a common factor which is C over 2, which is here, C over 2, and then multiply by DL plus DR. And you can see, finally, we are able to find an alternative equation to W plus C. So now we don't have to use this one. I'll box out for you. 
because this one applies only when the shape is trapezoidal, while now we have an alternative equation which I'll box it out, and this equation will simply find for me this irregular cross-section area. Are you following so far? Yes. Yes. But in terms of general procedure, guys, remember, in terms of the general procedure, nothing is going to change. So the only difference, please understand this, huh? The only difference will be how can we find the area? Before I use this equation to find the area, now all I have to do is don't use this equation, sorry, don't use this equation rather than use this equation to find the area. However, going forward, what if I have so many of this area? Like I have a cross section area at station 0 and 25 and then 50 and 75 every 25 meter. What can we do to find the volume? Any help? Multiply by 25. Uh, so, so guys, if you remember, if you remember what we've done here is simply we use the cross section area in trapezoidal or Simpson to find the volume. Please look at my screen. This is how we found the volume based on the cross section areas. So we'll do the same thing here. If you're able to estimate the cross section area using this equation here at station zero and 25 and 50 and 75, like every 25 meter. So then what you do is you should do is use trapezoidal or Simpson to find the volume. OK, I mean, I mean, I think it's a good time for now to do some exercise. I want every one of you, everyone, please, if you want to understand, please get a piece of paper, a scrap piece of paper, please. Get a scrap piece of paper, and then what we will do is, is we will simply try to find the cross section area of this figure here, uh, given the following information in a box. And I, I want you to, to simply kind of copy this very quickly. Copy this cross section very quickly and only box whatever you see on my screen boxed. For example, box out the width of the road, box out the side slope two to one on each side, box out the road elevation, and then finally box out the three elevation of the existing ground under the center line and then on the left and then on the right. Because remember, what you see on my screen is the final answer. However, in your assignment or even your midterm exam, you will have to come up with the old numbers based on the numbers that's given to you. What will be given to you are only the numbers in the box. Everything else you will have to come up with yourself. So please, for now, I want everyone to copy. Not everything on my screen, but just copy the road plus the existing ground plus everything that's in box. Everything else I'll teach you how to find. I will give you a couple of minutes to that, please.
OK, I think I'm uh, ready. So as I mentioned before, please understand that everything in a box will be given to you, starting from the road width, the side slope, and then the road elevation, and then three points on the existing ground. Your job is to find the other parameters that you want to find the area. And let me remind you, how do you find the area? Please take a look at this equation here. What do I need? I need HL, I need HR, I need C, I need DL and DR. And I'll show you right now how can we find all such information. Please watch this, very simple. Let's start with the C, so I'll box for you the C. How can we find the C? Any idea? Any idea how do we find the little C, which is the depth of fill at the center line? Elevation of the road with the elevation of existing. Exactly, sir. So that's the elevation of the road minus the existing ground at the center line. So 58 minus 55.5. Same thing applies to the left and applies to the right. For example, if you want to find HL, it's as simple as 58 minus 53, you'll get 5 meter on the left. How about the right? It is 58 minus 55.5, we get 2.5 meter on the right. What is really a little bit more complicated, which is not really super science, but a little bit more complicated, is how to find DL and DR. Let's do it, huh? So the DL has two parts. This part here, which is half of the road width, so you can see we take the 30, we divide by 2, so this will give you from the, from the center line to where the slope starts. Then we need to add this amount here. So how can we find this amount? It is not really very difficult. This amount is the horizontal projection of the blue line. So this the component is the horizontal projection of the line. So this line here, it slopes by two to one. It means it goes two units horizontal and it drops one unit vertical. OK, so how about if it went five meter vertical? What do you think? What was the horizontal? Any help? I said the um, line slopes. Double that. Double that. So it's a simple. This one is very easy number. This one is very simple. You take the side slope Z, you multiply it by the five, you get 10. So two times five, you get 10. But remember, remember that the side slope must be Z to one. Z to one, Z horizontal units to one vertical unit. In our case here, it is so simple because the side slope is two to one. I'm asking you, what if my side slope is three to two? What should we do? Reduce it in <laughs> terms of one. Exactly. So it was so three to two. It means it's one point five horizontal to one vertical, and we take the one point five and multiply it by the five. So please, before you multiply the, this number here to by the H left, make sure it's a Z to one. This number always must be one vertical unit. You can see two times five, it's 10. On the other side, 2.5 times two, it's five. And then the last is very easy, huh? because what we have to do is we add the 10 plus the 15. So this will give you 25. And then on the other side, we add the 15 uh, plus the five, so this will give you your GR equal to 20. I'm asking you, are we ready now to find the cross section area given that we found C, H, L, H, R, D, L, D, R? Are we, are we ready to find the area? Yes. Yes, so you can see it's W over four. It's over here, W over four, 30 over four, H, L plus H, R, and then C over two, multiply by DL plus DR. Please look at the map. Please understand the difference between multiplication and addition, huh? because I can tell you some of my students, they misinterpret the equation and they simply come up with the wrong number because they don't see where they multiply and where they add. So anyway, the cross section area is 112.5. Now I'll give you independent exercise. Please do that again in two minutes. Everyone, please do the same thing. Copy and paste, no change. Start from the uh, whatever is in the box until you find the total area. And if you agree, say I did it, it's OK.
Any one got 180 meter square for the cross section area? Can you give us some time, please? Sure, yeah. one, more, one more minute. One more minute. One more minute. I got the same 180. Okay, so probably you can continue on, on estimating the area later on. Uh, again, it's not uh, very difficult. Just make sure that you prepare the HL, the HR, the C, the GL, the GR uh, before you start your calculation. Now, uh, I want, I have a, a question for you. So um, now you have two sections. We know the area here uh, at zero. So please look at this. So this cross section here is at station zero. So it's at, that's at the start, huh? at the start. And then we do have another cross section at 150 meter. OK, so we have two cross sections. We are able to find the area. And I'm asking you, anyone in the class would give me a simple idea how to find the volume. As remember, we don't have volume so far. We don't have volume. We have only a cross section area at zero and a cross section area at station 150 meter. My question for you is, how can we find the volume? Any thoughts? Any simple idea? How do we find the volume? An average. Can you please give me the numbers? I'm going to say here volume equal and give me uh, give me some help, please. Volume equal. Lucas, I'm asking you. Volume uh, equal. Well, I don't know. Maybe I will do the first area times the distance plus the second area times the distance divided by two. Which is, well, look at this. Tell me if I'm doing wrong or right. I'm going to say 100, 112.5 and then plus 180 and then I will get the average. And then finally, after I get the average area, I multiply times 150 meter. Do you yeah, agree or just? Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was thinking. Exactly. So this is what, what do we call this method here? I'm going to write the, the name for you. So this method here, it's called average, average end, average end area method. And uh, if you guys remember, do you guys remember when I talked about trapezoidal method, what trapezoidal method is, be, is, is about, all about? Do you guys remember? Uh, uh, how can we, or, or, or what is the reason uh, behind the uh, behind the trapezoidal method? If you guys remember that time, you will you will see the trapezoidal method doesn't do anything more than it takes the average of the end areas. So it takes area one plus area two divided by two multiplied by distance, and then it keep doing this, and simply it uh, the uh, trapezoidal it says. The constant between the section divided by two multiplied by area one plus area two plus two multiplied by the sum of the areas in between. If you cannot remember, probably I can remind you here. OK, so the uh, trapezoidal method. The trapezoidal method, you can see it says here uh, uh, the uh, the distance. Oh, sorry, like, let's go here. 
Well, I think it should be here. Look at this, please. Look up my screen. So after we found all the cross section areas, we apply trapezoidal method. And how it works, we say 25 divided by 2, area 1 plus area n, the last one, plus 2 multiplied by everything in between the first and the last area. If you guys remember that. And simply, this is nothing more than average end area. Nothing more than average end area. So I want to remind you here, and let's write it down. So this is equal. This is equal. I can write it here. This is equal trapezoidal. OK, so the trapezoidal is nothing more than average end area method, but it's fast method. Now I will prove for you, although we're using this now for some time, but I will prove for you mathematically right now that trapezoidal or the average end area, it doesn't give you the perfect volume. I know that we have used it so far, and I never say anything about the accuracy of this of this method. And I'll show you right now that this method, it doesn't give you the perfect volume. To do, to do so, I have an example for you. And the example, I know some of you, after we finish, will say, okay, Tahir, that's not relevant. Like, we're not really building pyramids. So why the pyramid has to do anything with our class today? Please be patient, and I will show you at the end why I am showing you this example. So in this example here, I'm trying to, I have a pyramid. And this pyramid here of total height of 125 meter, that's the total height of the pyramid. And the base of the pyramid is 100 by 100 meter. The base of the pyramid is 100 by 100 meter. Now, uh, I'm going to remove the top of the pyramid. So anything that is uh, grayed here that will be removed. And then this blue thing which will stay. This blue part of the pyramid will stay. And my question for you is, what is the volume of this part here? OK, what is the volume of this part here? And then what we will do is, is we will simply try to use an average end area method and we'll see how much it will give us. Let's do that, please. So I'm going to take it with you easy. Huh? So the base of the pyramid is 100 by 100. So I'm asking you, how can we find A1? And remember, what is A1? I'm going to circle it for you here. So this A1, anyone to help me to find how much is A1? Ten thousand. Thank you, sir, because it's a square hundred by hundred. So the area one is ten thousand square meter. Great, thank you. Now, uh, if you are good at math and you will see uh, giving the geometry, like uh, the total height of the pyramid is 125 and we're chopping off the top 75 meter. If you do the similarity of triangle, uh, you have to trust me to save some time. This dimension here is 60 meter. One more time, if the total height is 125 and the base is 100 and we're chopping off the top 75, this dimension here is 60. Now let me show you what is the 60 on the 3D. Huh? So it means from here to there, this dimension is, how much? This is 60 meter. Can anybody help me with A2? And where is A2? Here is A2. It's the area of the other side. Any help? 3600. Thank you, sir. It's a square and 60 times 60. It is simply 3600. Great. So by what, it, what, like what you learned in my class, I know some of you will say that's easy because I have one end is, uh, is A1. The other end is A2, and I know the distance between them is 50 meter. So some of you will say, you know what? Here is my volume. OK, here is my volume. So the volume is equal to uh, 10,000. That's area number one. Area number one plus 3600. That's area number two. And I think if you look as if you correct me, please divide it by two. So that's an average area. And then finally multiply by 50. Anybody agrees? Do you guys agree that this is the volume of the remaining part of the pyramid? Yes. OK, you know what? This number, if you do the math, you do it, please do it if you want. And this number is 340,000 
meter cube. OK, that's what you learned so far. Really what I want to prove for you is that this number is not correct. I'll prove it to you, to you mathematically that this number, although so far that's what we used, but we will I will prove it for you that this number is not correct. Now I'm going to say some stuff and if you disagree, please stop me right away, right away. Now I'm going to draw here on this picture here. I will draw uh, the top pyramid. So this is the top pyramid. I'm sorry. Uh, the top pyramid is here. And I will give it color yellow. And then I will draw also. The big pyramids from here to there. To there. To there. And I will give it color. Let's say red. I'm asking you, would you agree that the remaining volume will be the volume of the red minus the volume of the yellow? Yes. OK, great. So now we agree. Nobody can say no. Huh? The volume of the remaining part, which is this one here, from here to there to this point to this point and then finally close this uh, volume here will be nothing more than so the green will be the red minus the yellow. Nobody can disagree. I guess nobody can disagree. Now I think the last time also we uh, we uh, uh, said that the volume of the pyramid is simply uh, one third of the area of the base times the height. So I'm going to show you right now. Let's go come up with uh, the volume of the yellow. So I'm going to say here. Here is this volume. So this volume any help how much this volume would be. I'm going to call it V to one equals. One third the area of the base times the height. One third the area of the base times the height. 1500. So 3600. That's the area of the base. I will multiply this by one over three. And then finally multiply by the height. Anybody to tell me how much is the height of this pyramid of the yellow one? 75. Thank you, sir. OK, how about can anybody help me with V2 where V2 is the volume of the big pyramid, the red one? One third. The area of the base, which is 10,000 and then the height is. Fifty. Oh no, the height of the red, one, the pyramid. One 125 oh, please. OK, please guys, and then finally what you have to do, please do V2 minus V1. So what happens here if you do V2 minus V1? I'm going to give you the results. Huh? So I'm going to give you the results. V2 minus V1, which is the volume of the red minus the volume will be 326666 meter cube. OK, now, oh my God, that's a serious problem. Look at this. So the volume using uh, the first principle by getting the volume of the big uh, or the big uh, pyramid minus a small pyramid, it gave me this number while our average end area method by getting the average areas and then multiply by the height. I got different number. If I get the same number, great. But if I get different number, I'm asking you, I need some vote. Which one you believe more? You believe this number more or you believe this number more? Second one, sir. The second one, the bottom one, huh? the bottom one is believe because I can tell you no one can dare among you can dare to say no. The volume of the green is not the volume of the red minus the yellow. Can you? No, you can't. And the other thing is who among you can say no, the volume of the pyramid is not one third of the area of the base times the height. If you can do that, please let me know. I want to meet you in person. Because nobody in 2021 can say the area of the circle is not by R squared. No one can say that. The area of the circle is by multiplied by the radius square. And that's why, guys, because this first principle, it means we would believe this number here, uh, and we know that this is the true volume. And you can see the volume from the average end area method we are using so far for how many classes right now? Three classes. It doesn't give us the perfect volume because you can see obviously there is some differences. Huh? 
And if you want to find the difference in percentage, that's not very difficult. Huh? You can see all my calcs. We get this difference, uh, but remember, we never talk about the difference. We always talk about percentage wise. We say, OK, is that 1% or 2% or 3%? So when I reference this number back to the true value, which is 326, uh, 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 this number here, the true value, uh, I got 4.08%. It means the average end area method is not exact. It's approximate method. It can give us the volume within plus or minus 5%. And I can tell you, and I probably this is something you already knew from CVT. In CVT, there are for a, for an engineering problem, there could be several approach or several solution. Some of them they are very accurate, and some of them they are not that accurate. Okay, so the average end area method, which we said here, it's equal to trapezoidal. Huh? We said that already. That average end area is the same as trapezoidal. This is not an exact method. It gives us a volume within plus or minus 5%, 5%. Nota, I know some of you are asking right now, is there any other method that gives you the exact volume? Yes, there is. And here is our final name uh, before we go into a break. So we have here a method called prismoidal method. Prismoidal method. Look at this name. I'll zoom in. Prismoidal rule or prismoidal method. And this rule here, I'm claiming that this rule will give us the exact volume. So how can I prove it? Anyone to help me? How can I prove that this exact method? I think you can agree if I apply prismoidal rule on this method here and it gives me this exactly the same number here, then it's good method. If it gives me any different number, then it's an approximate method. Do you guys agree? Yes. OK, so here is the prismoidal method, which is not very difficult. I'm going to box it out for you. So prismoidal method said in order for you to find the volume, use equal D over six. And D, you can see the D here is the same as D. Huh? So the D is 50 meter, so that's easy. So we know the 50. A1 plus A2, which doesn't change. Same thing. So A1 is your first area, and A2 is your second area on the other end. OK, plus, that's the new thing, a plus. Four of the area of the middle section. Watch this. Huh? So we have to add plus four multiplied by the area of the middle section. So where is the area of the middle section? It's here. Please watch this. Do you see this section in the middle between A1 and A2, which is on the 3D? It's here in red and on the elevation here. It is uh, in red as well. So this is the section in the middle. OK, so now let me ask you if this dimension is 100 and this dimension is 60. What do you think about this dimension? Any help like from here to there? which is the dimension of the section in the middle? 80. It's 80. And uh, I'm asking you, then if this dimension is 80, what will be the AM? How much is AM? 80 by 80. Thank you, which is 6400. So watch this, please. So this number here is very simple. This number is 6400. It's 80 times 80 which is equal to 6,400, OK? Some of you I know, and that's a very common mistake. Some of you think, OK, Tahir, why don't we just get the average area? So we get A1 plus A2 divided by 2. Let's do that. So I'm going to say here A1 is 3,600 plus A2 is 10,000, and then divided by 2. Can anybody help me with this number, please? Sixty-eight hundred. OK, look at this, please. Uh, watch this. So what do you think? They are equal or not equal? Not equal. 
So all I'm trying to say here is that please don't think of this area in the middle is the average area. It is not. The area of the middle section is that we have to draw a section in the middle in between the two areas and then find the area of the middle section. Now let's try. I want all of you to do please. I'll do the volume here. So the volume will be equal will be 50 over 6 multiplied by multiplied by 10,000 plus 3600 plus 4 multiplied by 6400. OK, please do it. And I know that you will get 326666 meter cube. And what does it mean? It means Brismoidal method will give us the right answer. OK. Brismoidal method will give us the right answer. So it matches 100% the volume that we got using first principle, while average end area method, it doesn't give us the exact answer. Why I spend time to do all of that? Because there is no way for me to convince you that average end area method is not exact, except if I go this way. Mathematically right now, you know 100% that average end area method is not exact. To find the exact volume, you must use Prismoidal rule. However, Prismoidal rule, it's, although it's exact, so it's wonderful, but it requires more work because you have to find the middle section. Now, since in our class we're not really building pyramids, what we're building in our class probably a, a, a road, huh? So I'll go back to our problem and remember, what did we use so far? What I'm asking you, which method did we use so far in this problem here? Average end. OK, so I will finish the this part before the break by showing you that we, if we want to get an exact volume, what we have to do is we must use Brismoidal and Brismoidal requires. Can I get it, please? Any help? If I want to use Brismoidal, what do I need to do? What do I need to do if I want to use Brismoidal? Find the middle area. The middle section. So here we go, guys. Look at this, please. So you can see here I have section at zero and section at 150 to apply Brismoidal. Here is what you have to do. Number one, you need to find the middle section, which is in the middle, which is at 75. And I know some of you will say, oh, Tahir, that's super difficult. How can we find the middle section? I will tell you it is not very difficult. The middle section is simply an average of everything. What does it mean? For example, watch this. You can see here my road elevation at zero is 58. Here we go, 58. And my road elevation at 150, it is simply 60. I'm asking you, what would be the road elevation in the middle? Simply the average. And you can see 58 plus 60, that will be 59. And that's the road width, the road elevation in the middle. How about the road width? You can see the road width here is 30 meter and the road width here is 30 meter. I'm asking you, what is the road width in the middle? Any help? 30. 30, you can see here, here is my 30, no change. Now, uh, let's look at, for example, at DL, DL. Okay, when you look at DL here, it's 25 meter. And then at 150, the DL became 23. Anybody tell me what will be the DL on the middle section? 24. Thank you so much. Look at this, please. So you can see here, here is your DL on the middle section. You can keep doing the average. And once you're ready with all the parameters to find the cross section area, remember we need W, we need uh, H, L, C, and HR, and we also need DL and DR. Once you know those uh, six parameters, we can find the area and please do it on your uh, 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 leisure time and then find the area. And this area will be 146.25. Finally, when you know the area of the middle section, it goes here. Look at this, please. 150, which is your D over 6, 150 over 6, multiply by area 1, which is at zero plus area at 150 plus four multiplied by the area of the middle section and this volume. This volume is your exact 
your exact volume between the two sections. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? So D is the total distance, right? Uh, that's tricky, Bart, and thank you so much for bringing this up because one of the things that confuses my students is that they think this is just like um like trapezoidal. They think it's 75. While it is not 75, the D is the distance between A1 and A2. A1 and A2. So it's 150, not 75. Thank you so much for bringing this up. OK, so finally, before the uh, break, uh, I want to mention here, and this section here is for information, so you are not required to know any about this one. It's just for information. And so I'm asking you here, do we call this section one boy cross section or three or multiple boy cross section? What do you think? Multiple. That is multiple cross section, and the reason why we call it multiple, look at this. Look at my existing ground in Magenta. You can see there is one break point here uh, uh, where it meets the side slope, and then there is a break point here, and there is another break point here, and another break point here. So it breaks so much, and that's why for every section, I will need to survey more points for every section. You can see it's even more than three, and I can tell you, you will never find a simple equation like what we did here, like W divided by 4 plus HL plus HR because it's super complicated. And the way we solve this problem is using AutoCAD. We draw this thing on AutoCAD and we try to find the area between the magenta and the blue on AutoCAD. And you think about it's kind of integration, huh? Because the total area is nothing more than segmentation of those small areas. OK? So I provided this for you to understand what does it mean by multi point cross section. We'll take 10 minutes a break and after the break, we'll come back and finish our class. Any question for now? Any question for now? If no, I will see you guys here at uh, uh, 12.08 sharp. 12, uh, sorry, 1.08 sharp. 